Hey, what's going on? Hey, so this is Admin from Place Guys. So we're gonna do a quick install video. So this is probably gonna be version six. Uh, as always, uh, yeah, there's just always a lot of damn changes. Um, so I'm basically gonna just kind of show what you're going through here. So this is as of version 6.051. Um, if you look at the older install videos, you're gonna be like, holy crap, there's a lot of changes. And there's been quite a lot of changes in one year. Um, so um, yeah, hopefully this video helps you out. Uh, please take you know any tips from it. If you any of you watched the VMware video, this is uh, basically uh, a VM that I set up. So if you want to check out that VMware video, you can see that here. You know, I created a VM in the background, and I'm tunneled. You know, I'm basically tunneled into this. So it's pretty cool. You know, um, you can save money, right? So if you want to test out Plex God. Uh, so, anyways, um, I usually tell people to use the Hertzner Cloud. If for some reason you have any problems. Um, with like doing sanity checks or any of that stuff, you know, Hertzner Cloud is a good way to go. If you don't have the system resources, they do give you your own IPv4 address. This is not advertising. I just tell people this because there are people who have funky versions of Ubuntu or they have a buddy who gives them a box and they just have all kinds of issues. So um, Hertzner Cloud is, like I said, you pay like a Euro penny per hour and you pay no more than 250 per hour, I mean per month. And when you reboot your virtual machines up like in 10 seconds, they do like some uh, RAID 10 on the bunch of NVMe drives. So a uh, good way to go. Before I usually kind of gave a demo of it in the videos. So if you want to do see it, just check out, you know, the previous videos. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is my uh, machine. So what happens is we go to install PG and then what happens is we get the snippet of code and then we just go ahead and paste it in here. But what I always tell people to do is, uh, you know, you need to run it as sudo. But to be honest with you, just run it as root, um, which can help eliminate most of your problems if you have any. So you can see we went ahead and we're installing the code. So um, this thing is kind of installs in phases. So right now it's basically installing updates. Um, after the updates install, what it does, it takes a Plex Guide file and it moves it to your user bin. So after uh, this piece installs, it's going to say, hey, go ahead and type Plex Guide. Uh, when you type Plex Guide, it executes another script. And it's basically going to go through and just start installing Plex Guide. So for some of you that want to learn how to code, and I still consider myself an amateur, maybe an advanced amateur now, but um, I do have a PG New Coders How-To Guide. Um, it's I need to fill up more. So, you know, I'm teaching on a four GitHub desktop, so I'm going to have more tips for you. Uh, if you do check out the Noobs Linux series, you'll you'll start seeing videos on like how to do certain things. Um, so some of those videos may help you along with this, the, the Noobs Guide. Um, the purpose of Plex Guide is not only so you can learn how to just run PG and PG your thing. Uh, the goal is so you learn and get something out of this. Uh, the biggest thing is I was struggling with Linux a year ago and basically I, I dealt with a bunch of advanced coders on Reddit. And they don't like to share knowledge. Other projects are boneheads. Uh, you, you know how the internet is. I, I'm one for sharing knowledge. The reason Plex Guide got started was based off purchasing a domain name in 2016 and start build, and I started to document it on a Google document. So that's where Plex Guide comes from. So, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and type Plex Guide. And so what you're doing is, is when you're typing that command, right? Uh, it's executing PGSH and it's gonna start going through all the stuff like, you know, what versions, start building all this stuff out. So basically, if you're ever curious about the code, go to PGSH. This is what, as soon as, as, soon as you run Plex Guide, the actual command itself, uh, just so you have a little bit of insight here, and you know, sorry for, for some of you may not care, but so you have an idea, is, is that it's gonna say, hey, go ahead and, um, you know, uh, basically go ahead and execute Plex Guide. So trying to see where here. So it's gonna generate an emergency key and then it's going to go ahead and it's going to run through pgsh so as soon as we run it you're going to start seeing some of the, these things execute like anzabel r clone i uh, do have versioning control which does help out quite a bit so let's go ahead and type plex guide and you can see right now it's installing the basics so it's asking you if you want to agree so right now we are on this part of the code somewhere or no the pre-install right here so this is what you're seeing right now and so what happens is once this is done, it's gonna store a variable. Long story short, every time you play Sky, Plex Guide, you shouldn't see this over and over again. So you can see that now it's gonna go ahead and install. 
and the PG, the, all the install scripts are located in install. So if some of you are curious, there is an install folder. And the reason I want to teach you this is because if you, you know, make some modifications or um, you want to do some things, you'll be good to go. I know I'm bad with my alphabet install. There we go, scripts. So you can see the pre-install. Uh, let's see. So I was doing a pre-install, but I forgot what I called the actual starting one. Hmm. But anyways, these are where all your scripts are um, for executing this whole thing. So right now, you installed the newest Plex guide. You basically installed Edge, but I basically set it up where it installs and it's going to force you to pick a version. So for example, we're going to go with 6051. We're going to get Henner and it's going to clone it now and it's going to kick you out. The reason is, is because Ansible just installed and now Ansible is going to execute a series of commands to get you going. So we're going to go ahead and type Plex guide here and you'll notice installing pre-install basics. So it's doing that. Blasey, blasey. So now it's upgrading alias commands. And so what that is, is basically all these commands like T drive, UFS monitor. So it's a bunch of commands that, that you're typing. Even Plex guide is a command itself, PG edge. Upgrading server IDs. See that's that right there. So you're gonna create an ID for your server. That's, the ID is not really that important, but it's if you ever do a backup and restore, this is the name of your server that's gonna sit on your Google Drive. Uh, and as I said earlier, keep it simple, stupid, you know, kiss. So uh, you know, I apologize. Some of you maybe don't understand the reference. Uh, don't don't create your server and go like this because if you create that, then you're gonna have to type all that out when you do a restore. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this just test server one. You know. Is this correct? Yes. So it's saying it's set. Now it's upgrading dependency commands. So right now it's installing all your basic packages. So like dependency sh. So it's kicking off a uh, a role that has all that stuff. So you can see right there tags dependency. So if you go look at the dependency folder, um, it's installing all of that stuff for you. See. So hopefully that helps you out. Okay. So if you're missing something on your server, you can add it there or even push it to us. So you say it says it takes for all, my experience roughly takes about on a decent internet connection, maybe about 30 seconds, no more than a minute. Uh, if you do get a hold up here and you're here for like uh, more than 10 minutes, there's something wrong. Uh, <laughs> should never take that long. But you gotta remember it's really, you know, whatever you're missing is downloading each thing one by one, which, which can take a while. So the less there is on your machine, the longer that this can take. Um, I notice if you use like Hertz and cloud server, some providers, with new images, it, it's fairly fast because they're usually installing a bunch of pre-installed stuff here for you. Um, trying to think what else while we have this up. Uh, let's look back at the PG, there we go. So now it's installing folders and directories. So again, you can see that it's just doing its thing. And the reason we have pre-installed folders here for you is because it's chain modding them with all the correct permissions. Now it's installing Docker. I can say Docker is probably one of the longer pieces here. Um, so uh, it does work on, like again, it works on Ubuntu 16 and 18. Docker is awesome because basically everything you're gonna install now is a bunch of virtualized containers. So, you know, in the past you can take Ubuntu and just install Plex and you can install all these programs hard, you know, on your machine. But the problem is if you install something, you run into a thing called dependency hell and you may end up messing up something or goofing something. You don't want that to occur. So by creating a bunch of virtualized containers, basically you're creating like it's, it thinks it's, so basically like when we install Plex, Plex thinks it's running by itself and on its own machine. It's pretty cool. All the data that it generates gets exported to a, an external folder. So you're gonna see the power of Ansible if you ever decide to look at the code. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Um, the good thing I like about Ansible here, what you're seeing is, is that it provides you error notification. So some of the times if you go to Plex God, you might notice people like taking a snippet of this code uh, and posting it. We did used to have the blue menus, but the reason I got away from that is, is because if there were errors, it was just hard to figure out what was going on. Um, and the good thing is, is that this keeps an ongoing log. So you, you can see that from the beginning. Um, well, shoot, looks like I need to fix that for the pre-installer. <laughs> pre-installer keeps wiping everything. But typically for when you're executing the entire program in its entirety, it will um, just keep um, a ma massive log. So if you see some kind of error, you can go back and, and snip it. Uh, Watchtower, basically what this is, is it's a program that updates all your containers. Um, the reason I have options here is because 
Um, if you update all your containers automatically, there might be a bug in a container and you might not be too happy with that. So if you can say never update containers, in order for you to update them, you either have to reboot your machine or you have to rerun it through Plex Scott. Um, I set this up because some people don't like their Plex uh, being updated because there was versions of Plex where like all the uh, covers stopped working and all those other issues. So, or you can say update all containers. So whatever you're gonna pick, if you need to go back, you can go into settings and you can change this so it's not you know, um, life altering that, uh, <laughs> it's not life altering that, uh, you made a mistake here. So you can see that it's documenting everything. So, um, shouldn't be too much longer. So yeah, the, the install process has been fun. If you're ever bored, go to the, you know, my, my YouTube series link and, and click the very bottom video and see how the install for Plex Guide went like eight months ago. So, you know, December of last year. Um, yeah, crazy. So uh, Plex Guide, like I said, originally started uh, the documenting in 2016. Uh, I was doing it all in bash scripts. Um, and I noticed people all over the web having different techniques. Uh, so, okay, so this edition is very important. If you pick the wrong one, you're typically gonna have to uninstall it or wipe your box. Um, there is a variable in, 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 in that is set in place. So if for some reason you picked the wrong one right now, just go to the Wikipedia and, uh, you know, look up the, uh, PG editions and it will show you a command so you can delete it and this will come up again. Um, the reason we don't allow you to switch, uh, is because there's just too many variables and too many things that go on between all of them. So, uh, because if you switch between one to another, you're going to bork your entire box. So, um, make sure you pick the right one. Typically G drive is the one that, uh, you typically will use. GCE feeder edition specifically uh, for uh, Google, Google's uh, cloud. So we're gonna go ahead and pick G drive edition. Uh, excuse me here. So now you can see we install Plex Guide. So that's pretty much it. So in the future, um, if you ever need to update it, you just type PG update and you pick what you want. So, you know, if I wanna go back in time, I can. Um, so if I see like really borked versions or reasons why it's worth upgrading, you'll see me take out one. So you might be like, well, I love 6.4.0. It's not good to, there's a reason why I took it out because it may contain a you know Docker bug or some other bug that I know that's critical. So you can see between 3.8, 4.8, you know, I kind of typically declared them safe, but you know, uh, if you go back, they do have bugs, but they're not critical. Um, Edge is, the, is like what I'm currently working on. Um, I typically use PG fork, long story short. Um, <clears throat> I don't usually update Edge directly, but if you want the latest beta, uh, sometimes they are on par with the latest version, you just do Edge. So, uh, but again, not the best one to use. And you can see that it, this is it. So if I type Plex Guide, it comes on up. So um, if, you haven't, if you're kind of curious about what all the stuff does, uh, you know, please watch the uh, introductory video um, that it will kind of give you like a step-by-step. -step. So in the introduction video, we will use version 6.048. So if some of you are familiar with that introduction video, you'll notice that this is, where is it at? Authentication system is new. Before it was just AppCar, see? So we continue to add a lot of options here. So we broke it down. So um, other than that, hey, I appreciate your time for checking out this install video. Uh, you know, hey, if you love this project, you know, hey, uh, you know, please, you know, please feel free to contribute by, you know, join our Discord. Uh, people have donated to the project. So like I said, what I do is I, I buy hardware, licenses, uh, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, it, a lot of donations, I say, help cover about 60% of the expenses. So uh, thank you for those uh, helping out. And again, I understand everybody can help out. Hey, just we got people helping out from tech support on the forums to Discord to, to learning how to push code. Um, Plex Guide is community focused, and, and that is the key to this project. Um, like I said, we're not a bunch of uh, rough coders, you know, giving everybody a hard time. So other than that, uh, please, you know, please subscribe um, to this video. Please comment if you have questions. If you see anything out of the ordinary, please uh, feel free to, to note. Uh, other than that, I appreciate your time. Have a good one.